Hello, everybody. Hope you're all doing all good on your side of the internet. I'm Jack, as you already know that, because I'm the best talker here. And over there is that guy, Ben, who I do this channel with. And obviously, this is called Theorycraft, where we like to do knitting tutorials on YouTube. But obviously, we craft theories here about all kind of things. We've already done things like Doctor Who, Spider-Man, X-Men, you know, we've done so much already. So if you want to go have a look at those videos, check those out. But we're going to be talking about the 1968 cartoon, which I'm sure you've probably all seen at some point in your life, which is Wacky Races. This was definitely a staple for me when I was a little kid. And I do definitely love watching this. I found it so much fun. Didn't really understand the concept, but who cares? It's something funny and goofy that I thought would be really fun to talk about. So without further ado, oh, there's no drum roll in the background. Never mind. Let's get ready to <laughs> So yes, Wacky Races. <laughs> yes, that was perfect, dude. Wacky Races has been a namesake cartoon for probably two, maybe three generations worth of basically the most bizarre, bonkers, Hanna Banana um, characters that Cartoon Network owned at the time in the early, well, late 60s, early 70s. Some of them got a spin-off series, some of them just were there for the sake of being there. But it was at such a diverse amount of ideas for characters, hence the name Wacky Races, because it was wacky characters with a race. Yeah, but <laughs> that's pretty much it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they just literally, it was all these stupid contraption of vehicles that would do a Grand Prix styled race on the most absurd race courses that defy gravity in so many different ways. Oh, yeah. But between me and Jack, we were trying to figure out if there was at some eventuality someone wanted to make a live action adaptation or if we were to be able to do it ourselves at the very least who would we cast as who because there are several different characters if i can just pop on to the screen so ladies and gentlemen i give you our many many characters of <laughs> wacky races so the one that everyone knows because of the new Scooby-Doo movie, top left is Dick Dastardly and Muttley. Basically, the main villain to all of these guys. And for whatever reason, no matter what he does in the race, he never wins. I think he's only won maybe once, but then they classed it as like a like cheat. Like, like a disqualification, I yes. think. Yes, which in itself, I can never understand how, because all these vehicles have got random gadgets inside that are meant to design to mishap somebody else in the race. Surely that would logically disqualify all of them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, obviously, you had like the other famous dog, apart from Scooby Doo, which was Muttley, which I know Ben has do done a really good impression on. I've heard it myself. I've heard it myself, even though it sounds like he's wheezing down the camera at the minute at me. But yeah, when we got to start with like just the most obvious castings for characters, if you have Dick Dastardly, the voice for Muttley, pretty much easy going. You know, that's not going to be too hard to replicate. But who involves it? But Ben came up with the first suggestion for Dick Dastardly. And who did you choose again? Steve Coogan. Obviously, it has to be a has to be a British guy. Oh God, yeah. Like <laughs> no matter what, no matter what, in an American movie, the bad guy is generally British. Case in point, Die Hard. You have the obviously uh, Alan Rickman as the bad guy in Die Hard, and of course, he's obviously British. Like I, I don't, I never understand why the Americans hate us Brits so much to make us the bad guy in every single movie. Well, it's not just that. It's even in, like, I'm a big fan of professional wrestling. So in when it comes to gimmicks and so on, if anybody is not American, they're classed as villains. So whether that's Russian, German, British, they're all classed as villains. So I think it just goes with the territory, to be honest. And, yeah. Uh, plus we're British, so. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, that's fair enough. But the other thing as well is... As, as I said earlier, not a lot of these characters actually got their own spin-off series after this show began. It's only Dick Dastardly and Penelope Pitstop were the only two technically that got their own spin-off series afterwards. But then there's the two caveman ones down in the bottom end of the screen, which I think became the inspiration for another great cartoon series, which was... Captain. 
Until which you again, he... the, until you mentioned that to me ages ago, I completely forgot it even existed. Oh. God, I used to love Captain Caveman. It was such... It was Captain Caveman and the Pussycats. And I just find it so funny because this is back in the 70s where you had, like, everyone obsessed with shagging, basically, because you had the power of love. Like, everyone was a hippy-dippy person back in the 70s, apparently. But it was... Captain Caveman was another series. I think we're going to have to do a video on at some point if we could ever do it as a movie. Oh yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he was made, he was briefly in the Scoob movie that came out, which again made me laugh because I'm surprised that anybody considered him because it's such it, all of these cartoons are obscure to a degree. I do wonder what were they even drinking, smoking, or what back in that era because it wasn't anything legal. Well, it couldn't have been anything legal. Well, well, it was the decade of the 60s where you had the hippie movements and so on, so that probably explained quite a lot. Yeah, exactly. But we also have... Uh, let's have a look. I believe in the bottom right corner is the Ant Hill Mob, which was basically an ama a mobster group amalgamation of midgets. Now, I know somebody's going to say, why would you say midgets? No, it really was just short mobsters. It well, was like, well, like three midgets, foot... Numbers. Like midgets, dwarves, what, what's the correct term that won't upset the snowflakes? Well, the, I think there is a terminology that if you're four, between three and four foot, you're classed as a dwarf. If you're three foot and under, you're classed as a midget. I don't know how that works, but okay. I don't understand it either. But it's the class system that it is. But essentially, we were trying to cherry pick actors that are known to be quite short, and obviously Warwick Davis would be one of the mob, uh, the Ant Hill mob. Peter Dinklage, Game of Thrones, yeah. And, of course, the other guy we were hoping to pick, but, of course, he sadly died this week, was the guy, the really short guy from, um, oh, what was it? From Jackass. Yes, yeah. And he, and he was a professional, and he was a, pro, he was a legit pro wrestler from WCW and uh, TNA Impact. But other than that, I personally can't think of many very short actors I actually can. I can think of. I can think just as a funny one. Wee Man from Jackass. Yeah, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it would just make sense to have like just shorter actors then put in like a CGI face. Or, yeah, like, it... putting somebody who's like a CG as putting a CGI face of a tall actor onto a shorter frame. Just if you're gonna do it like proper legit, you have to have proper actors for this. You oh, have definitely, to. definitely. I mean, at the same point, like it would be a bit, I don't know the right wording, but it'd be unfair to a degree if you'd get a average sized actor to play someone that's a lot shorter because it's a bit of a kick in the teeth, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course. Yeah. But then we were also like trying to cherry pick other characters because like we say, not all of these characters actually were known much out of this series besides being in it. Penelope Pitstop. I said to you was like the easiest one to cast, the most ditzy blonde actress that I know. Despite the fact that she's not actually that ditzy, but she's very good at playing ditzy. Is Margaret Robbie the actress that played Harley Quinn among God knows how many other blondish characters? Yeah, and I can't fathom anybody else who's capable enough to be as ditzy but as classy as what Penelope Pitstop was as a character. Well, I didn't even know when it comes when it comes to Penelope Pitstop. I didn't even know. It's a real tongue twister for some reason. Um, I didn't even know that she had like such a really cool uh, sort of grip and inspiration on like the cosplay community. She's very popular with uh, female cosplayers, which is pretty yeah. cool, which I found out. Yeah, I mean, it always makes me laugh. Though my mum is very good at doing an impression of Penelope Pitstop going. Yeah! Help! Help! <laughs> it's, oh, it's amazing. She's so good at it. But the thing is, it's like there's so many obscure things in this series. To I mean, look on the screen. To the left, you've got obviously a Canadian style like car or whatever. <laughs> and I had the most funny thought to best person to play it because he is technically Canadian already, and I'm sure he would love it. Ryan Reynolds. 
you, like, because he's technically I, Canadian anyway, and he's quite a buffish guy. He's quite lean. I could imagine him actually like happily as Larry, just like being this as like a random character. How funny would that be? I would love that. Just like, and it's an ex it's an excuse to have like some really good, like they have to be good actors, uh, but like quite a lot of like especially well-known ones, just for a good giggle. As that, that's what this film will be, just a really oh, good Oh, definitely. But the thing is with that Canadian guy is that his sidekick is a beaver. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so more, the uh, like the flannel shirt, how much more stereotypical Canadian can you get? Well, I can't remember if the beaver can talk in the series or not, but if they could, the perfect person I just thought of would be the guy that did the voice of Rocket, Rocket Raccoon in Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, that was um, Bradley Cooper. Yes. Just for the sheer fact that he always gets typecast as like random CGI characters, but he's got a decent voice to voice it over. Yeah. And the fact that obviously beavers and raccoons are probably very similar mammals to a degree. So it'd be quite a funny nod later on if Deadpool met Rocket Raccoon. He'd be like, hang on, didn't we race together? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, if, just like if this yeah. was to happen, of course. Just, just an excuse to have a fun Easter egg later on in another film. Yeah. But then we also got, like, in the top middle, we got a guy called Professor Pat Pending, who is basically just a wacky scientist who I think was meant to be a concoction of Danish and Swedish or something stupid. Something like that. I can't remember exactly. So I'm trying to think of someone that could do a European accent without it being insulting, but also is quite intelligent. I mean, who would you imagine as Professor Pat Pending? Elon Musk. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, he's not ginger and he doesn't have a coma. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I mean, it could work. It, it could work, but it would be just so weird at the same time. I don't know, but if anybody has any suggestions, please pop them down below in the comments. Yes, definitely. I mean, what else have we got? We got the Red Baron, which is at the bottom end of the screen next to the caveman. And I don't think he ever talks much. He's just literally, well, it's meant to be German because it's the Red Baron. It's, yeah, that in itself I found hilarious because if you look very carefully, I think they tried to like twist the like symbolism of the German. Like, can I say? Yeah, I suppose I say it's swastika, because the red baron, the red barons were German. But oh, if, right, I see what you mean now. But they replaced yeah. it with a W. But the red barons were like those type of fighter pilots, I believe, were German originally. That's what they were based off. Yeah, I see what you mean. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm trying to think of someone that's a funny Germanish actor to try and get away with it. Ah, well, the thing is. Michael Fass Michael Fassbender is he has German heritage and he if you see him in German interviews he can speak fluent German he's br he's brilliant mm. yeah I think that could work quite well to be fair because the only thing I would say is that he'd have to grow the funny mustache for whatever reason all the men have like really weird facial hair like you got the Canadian guy that's got like the big like basic moustache that's like Tom Selleck style. Yeah. Then you've got the Red Baron and Dick Dastardly have got like thin twiddly moustaches that make him look evil. It's, <laughs> it's so stupid. I mean, the other thing as well is at the very bottom here... Peter Perfect? It, Peter Perfect. Now, I think he's meant to be British. I'm trying to think of... Older actor, some... remember? Do you well, remember? I can't remember who we picked originally, but I had a random thought. Who was it we picked originally? Originally, it was George Clooney. Yeah, we did. Yeah, George Clooney could work to a degree because he's quite a suave and sophisticated guy and he's a bit pompous enough to uh, be. Oh, yes, definitely, yes. But I had an even weirder thought just now. What about the guy that was the original Stig for Top Gear? Oh, yeah, just like, no, because it's a race, yeah. Yeah, okay, exactly. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, I see that. I can see, yeah, I see that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I suppose you could always add in Richard Hammond to the Ant Hill mob, because he's quite a short guy. 
Yeah, that's very true. Very true. Oh dear. But I mean, for the rest of them, you they, got they, they were kind of just like side ones, to be honest. They never really spoke or anything all that. No, much, or did much I mean, of anything. Well, no, because you got like in the right hand middle, you got like a tick a typical hillbilly. And then the bottom left is the army. So it's like two completely opposing ideas. I could easily see Nathan Fillion as the hillbilly. <laughs> just because he's just so... He's not serious enough to be someone that's in the army. But I see John Cena as the army guy. Oh, my God. <laughs> like, it would be perfect, though. Like This big, bulky dude in the tiny tank... Oh, yeah. Plus, like, John Cena, it's just like, I've been watching him for years, obviously, because I'm a wrestling fan. Yeah. And it's just, he can be really funny when, like, he has to be. He's yeah, really he's quite actually, funny. He's quite a decent actor, to be fair. But then, like you say, he's had years' worth of experience in wrestling. Yeah, exactly. I, the only one I don't know how we would do it is the one in the top right, where it's meant to be an amalgamation of, like, weird monster-type things. It's like... It's not the Adams family, but it looks very similar esque, if that makes sense. Ba -da -ba -bum. <laughs> but again, it's this entire series was just utter nonsense. Like, none of it ever made sense. Yeah, but still, that's kind of the point of it. But we didn't care as kids. We no, of care. course not. I mean, at the end of the day, it was just sheer lunacy. These were the days before they had to put in adverts saying, please do not try and do this at home, children, because children wasn't stupid enough to try them at home. Yeah, because it was still like in like the um, like the glory days of uh, when you had, uh, well, I think it was stop, I think it was called Stop Frame Animation, but I've seen, I found it on Instagram the other day. They used to have like a light box with like the background or whatever that was on it. And they used to have they used to have all of like the scenes of the series, like every scene that was happening on these like see through screens, and mm -hmm. they had to put it on there, press it, change yeah. it, press it, and it was like yeah, it was like reams and reams of pages just to make yeah. one twenty minute episode. It was yeah. ridiculous. Yeah, it's it's painstakingly tiresome because of everything back then it had to be drawn by hand. There was no computers no to do it for you it was you did one bit it was literally making a flip book if anyone's ever tried it it on a small scale it's fine but when you got like to do the entire scenery the cars the characters because it the was, thing is it was literally it was the scene itself yeah and that near enough stage put but then you laid it over the top with everything else bit by bit to the i think it took them like half a day to do most of it if not longer yeah, and probably just get through half of it. Yeah. But, I mean, in terms of making this as an actual movie for, like, live action, how would we logically make the race happen itself? Because I don't think they ever explain the reason behind the races. It's just, it's a thing that happens. It's just, it's a race. That That's actually the only explanation we ever got as kids. And it's the only explanation we still got now. So mm. I, I, I just think you're going to have to just put it in just a really kooky universe where it, it can't fit in the real world. Let's be honest. It can't fit in the real world. So you're going to have to have it in sort of the realms of... Uh, like, I don't know, like the Flintstones is completely out of whack. So you might as well have it just as a completely weird universe to put it in. Yeah. I mean, the thing is, obviously, I got if this were to ever happen, I just hope to God that they don't make the same mistakes that Speed Racer made because that was a horrendous oh live God. action. Oh like, they goodness. tried so hard to make it toony, but they also tried too hard to make it realistic at the same time. I know we, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, God, that's a terrible movie in itself. I don't know, but obviously that's, what, obviously that's why we have a channel, why we talk about these things, obviously. But yeah, mm -hmm. you're going to have to accept, I would actually have them, uh, like all the characters and everything, all gunning for something, but you can't just have it in one race. I just have to be in a tournament of some kind, but I'm not really too sure what it would be for in this kind of universe. You could always make it as like a treasure hunt type thing. True. So like each race you get a piece of the puzzle to whatever it is. I mean, it could be 
in a way, you could make it kind of like Marvel's Battle World, where it's an amalgamation of different parts of reality that have been coalesced into this one thing, and they have to gladiatory sort of fight for one another in these races to get these pieces to try and put everything back. Yeah, that's that's the only slight thing I can think of that would reasonably work. I've just remembered one thing which we forgot to include in this. I've just remembered. It's a good thing. Oh, I'm so glad I remembered this. But, you know, with um, a lot of films which uh, Chris Hemsworth has done, it's usually depicted with a hammer of some kind. Yeah. Uh, you, you, lot, you lot probably know what the hammer is, but it's something called La Mjolnir. <laughs> mm-hmm. and, um, but, yeah, with, like, the, cave, with, like, the caveman uh, races, like, having been one of the cavemen, Yes. <laughs> yeah. Like, obviously, like for the hammer and like the stick. Yeah, yeah, Because yeah, yeah. like... they they hinted towards that concept in the new uh, Men in Black movie that he was in, which I find hilarious. That the fact that the alien just bats this normal hammer out of the way. But if we had Chris Hemsworth as one of those cavemen, it'd be so funny. And you could just imagine him go, and then he just like tries to swing it up, and he just goes thud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just, we're even just having a slight character break going. Like, we're like, even just like having like Ryan Reynolds, like the Canadian, just turning around. Like, it's like if like, <laughs> it's like, if, like you see like the gay man going past him, like in the car, in like that rocky car, like swinging that bat around. You could just have Ryan Reynolds as the Canadian going, Where have I seen that before? <laughs> and, just, <laughs> and just carry on, you know, just a little Easter egg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love that kind of stuff. <laughs> but. <sighs> I don't know, like, I do have a feeling eventually there is going to be more revamped versions of cartoons that we've come to know and love because people don't have original ideas anymore. This is the one thing that I've noticed in the past five years, if not ten years, the amount of reboots on so many different series that I remember as kids, I'm surprised that anybody even bothers coming up with an original idea and they just end up going through scraps that people threw away and went from that. Well, well, to be honest, to be honest, you are kind of right there. I mean, we're in a time right now where it's it's been a really, apart from obviously the whole worldwide situation, but we've had things such as the Avengers movies, which have been uh, probably, we have lived in a golden age of movies and TV series. I think there's no doubt in that. We've lived through a golden age, but... I am starting to get a horrible feeling that it might be coming to the end where there's just, like you said, no original ideas anymore. So are we going to get to the point where we're going to run out of characters, stories, and so on? Are we going to get to that point where we're running out of content? Well, yeah. I mean, the thing is, there are so many different shows that came out. Because the thing is, back in the early 60s, it was the Space Race. So there were so many different sci-fi series that were spawned from there onwards because everyone was interested in trying to get to the space race sort of thing. Yeah. But then once that was conquered, not a lot of sci-fi sort of has happened the past 10 years. No, because you had like the space, what was it called? Space Odyssey 2001. And obviously, yeah. it, and obviously it birthed the inspiration for Star Wars as well. Yeah. And like Star Trek and all that. Exactly. And it's the same when it comes to the kids' TV series, because... When we did my chat about Ben 10, the fact that it's been rebooted quite a lot. I mean, it's had its fair share of series, but then it's been rebooted a couple years ago. It's not because they can't continue it on. They just want to bring in a whole new generation of people to enjoy it. But then again, you can argue the same with DC, though. Well, DC have a different reason behind rebooting everything is because they just get bored every five years. That's literally their reason. Is like they just want to make things different. Yeah, although it's kind of a, it's well, those kind of things. Marvel and DC are a completely different world. So they got a vast number of characters that they've not even used yet. So. Mm-hmm. But I don't think there's much else we can add to this today, is there? I don't think so. But just with whack with wacky races, I. I sort of vaguely remember watching it. I we had, I had to do a bit of brushing up on this. Just I watched a few little episodes. Just it's just ridiculousness. It's the sixties yeah. after all, so I don't think nobody cared. I think they were all uh, probably doing a few substances Something of, about of, of some kind. But yes. I'll leave that to um, an imagination, or maybe not. But yeah. with, but with wacky races, it's just 
I think where it might lead to with reboots and so on is that there's so many forgotten gems from our childhood which i completely forgot about Mm -hmm. and i just think you know what like there's so many just forgotten gems from our childhoods that maybe there's an opportunity there to make something out of them i mean you've had like even just quickly before we go ben like sent me a clip which was on which was on tiktok of super duper sumos which i i I forgot that even existed and it jogged it jogged my memory and i went oh my god i forgot about this yeah i mean the thing is there's some cartoon series that you can't do because they were so borderline racist back then case in point hong kong fury was like oh oh, god (laughs) almighty like if you if you want to laugh at Americans just sheer racism in a cartoon series, it's literally a dog that can karate chop people. But yeah, he but, works for the police as a janitor, and nobody uh, is able to that co- like like understand the two are the same people. Uh, but what's, the, what, what's one of the staples of Chinese food as well? Oh, cho- yeah, it's... Um... Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, it's just like... I just... It's just stuff which they'd never be able to get away with now. Not no. by a long no, shot. No, not in a long shot. Like, there are some cartoon shows that you're never going to be able to rescue, no, I think. Th- there's some which you just have to leave alone. Although, yes. I would love... I would love, love, love to see a movie adaptation. I don't know if there is one as far as I know there's not, but correct me if I'm wrong. I would love to see a Top Cat film. They did do an animated one back in 2015. Again, I don't know if that could work, really, because in itself, it's a bit of an iffy line to walk because it's basically these stray cats that terrorise the neighbourhood because Officer Dibble doesn't like them, which someone could easily twist into saying that it's something else entirely, but I won't say now because... We can discuss this later. Yeah, but, but although, mind you, we did get Garfield. Uh, and I, I I didn't like those films at all. No, no, they were a catastrophe. Yeah, I, for God's sake, I, I'm so glad this. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> catastrophe. Yeah, oh, he's, yeah. He, he's full of puns, which I'm sure will be put onto. Shirts of some kind very soon on a particular site. I don't know what it's called. Red bubble. <laughs> yeah, and I ain't kidding you. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, this has been our brief chat for this week. We we just spit boring as usual because there's so little news on anything film related at the moment. We're having to come up with our own ideas. But for next week, I am going to be reviewing. A very, very wacky sci-fi movie that Jack's never heard of, but I am going to torture his brain to hell with. Um, is it Mars Attacks. Yeah, Mars Attack, yeah. Which, for those of you who may not know, is Tim Burton's first ever movie before Edward Scissorhands. And it is just, it's something else entirely. Like I've shown Jack a few clips and he just, his brain melted like the aliens did when they hear the song. But... <laughs> Yeah, the whole the whole time, just for reference, I was sat watching it, guys, like this. <laughs> yeah, but this is what I've got to educate Jack with for next week. So, again, thanks for joining us, everybody. It's a short and sweet episode. We're just ranting about a co- well, a completely random idea that we just spitballing as per usual. And yeah, stay safe, everybody, and we'll see you all soon. Stay healthy. Bye bye.